Um, so today's clip is on Mendel's second law of independent assortment. Okay, so the law of independent assortment states that each pair of factors, remember factors means alleles, may be combined with either of another pair. The factors controlling two different traits are independently assorted in the gametes. Okay, and that was Mendel's law. The modern explanation is that alleles controlling uh, two traits found in different chromosomes can come together independently or be separated independently. Um, so in the last video, we already seen a dihybrid cross, which resulted in the nine to three to three to one ratio of traits. Uh, Mendel argued that unlike pairs of factors and a hybrid um, could separate out from one another into gametes and then come together again in a predictable combinations in the second generation. In other words, when two or more pairs of genes segregate from one another at gamete formation, their distribution of any one of them is independent of any other. Mendel's observation can be explained by looking at meiosis. So here we have a cell <coughs> and we're looking at two uh, genes. The gene at A and the gene at B. So a few things just to note here. Um, first of all, uh, A, there is the dominant and recessive form. Likewise for B, dominant and recessive. Second thing to note is that they are on different chromosomes. Okay, so it's not as if we have a another factor here. Okay, it's not the case like we would have for C here. The, we're not considering um, the probabilities if they are on the same chromosome. We're only considering traits which are in different chromosomes. Okay, so we get rid of C. In both cases here, the person is heterozygous for each of these traits. It doesn't matter what the trait is. It could be, for example, this could be um, tongue rolling. This could be some other trait, uh, curly hair or straight hair. Um, there are different chromosomes and the person is heterozygous for both. Okay, and we're going to look now at independent assortment in meiosis. So... In the first prophase, the sister chromatids have formed, DNA has replicated. Homozo uh, homologous chromosomes line up in their pairs in metaphase 1, and their arrangement can be as follows. So, the dominant A and the dominant B line up on the same side of the cell, or that's what we see in X, or in Y, the dominant A and the recessive B line up on the same side of the cell. The converse is true for the other side of the cell. So four different types of gametes are possible at the end of meiosis two. So number one, number one, we have the dominant version of A and the dominant version of B. Again, remember that these are gametes, so there's only one of each type. On our second type here, we have recessive A and recessive B, in number three, we have dominant A and recessive B. And in number four, we have recessive A and dominant B. And that's a quick explanation of uh, Mendel's second law of independent assortment. Um, again, a very short video today. Hopefully that is helpful in explaining this second law.